Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we want to talk about inductance, what this is and so on. Yeah? Therefore I have drawn a little coil. Yeah? So I've drawn something like that, but cut open here. This shall be this, but only with one layer of turns, one layer of windings. Yeah? Does not really matter. We consider this as one layer of, of windings. Yeah? So this is this cut open. All right, so we have a coil. With N windings. That's it. And then we do have here a current. And I say the current is going in this direction, so it will go inside here at, this, at these lines, the current I is going inside and since this is a coil and, and actually one, one wire just wrapped around helix, helix shaped, uh, there is a current I. Uh, and now we come to a point where I never understood. When I learned this, I never understood it because they said, okay, the durchflut und theta, yeah, so the, the flush, the electric flush there equals, and now we had n windings, yeah, times, and we have the current I. This I understood. Yeah? It's, not, not, it's not that critical, huh? because actually what we are looking is we are looking at this area here, yeah? we are looking at this area and uh, say, okay, this is now the flow, huh? here in this direction, this is the This is the orientation of our of our area, and this this is now the 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 durchflutung of this. And then people used to say, and inside a coal, the the magnetic field is concentrating in this area, and that's it. So we have here actually equals uh, magnetic field strength multiplied by the length of the coil L. And this always said, hey, but what's... Okay, this is this part. Huh? This is this part. But what is all this part? Huh? Why? Why do I don't have... Why I don't have to take this into account? Huh? It always puzzled me why we just say here L. And I'm going to explain it to you. I make here now a zoom. So I only have a look at wires next to each other. So here's a wire, 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 and here's what a wire. And so on. Yeah? That's it. And we have the same situation like here. Everywhere the current is going inside. Right? And now I take, I choose one wire. Let's choose this one. Uh, and let choose this point randomly. Yeah? Think about what is the magnetic field of this wire. The magnetic field of this wire is going in this direction. Good. Yeah? What is the magnetic field of this wire? The magnetic field of this wire is a little bit smaller going in this direction, and the magnetic field of this wire is a little bit smaller going in this direction. Yeah? And now you see what is happening. I have here a part which is going down, I have here a part which is going up. Those two are compensating each other and I'm ending up in having only a component in this direction. Let's make here two further. Yeah? Here this one will go here, this one will go up here and also the components up and down they are compensating each other, so I end up in a really long magnetic field in this direction because those parts are all are all gone. Yeah? And now let's think, and 
on, on below, there's the same happening, but in the other direction. So above, we only have in this direction. Below, we only have in this direction a field. Yeah? And now let's have a look at this. Here above, we only have in this direction a field. Here below, we only have in this direction a field. And if I'm taking into account this also, yeah, here the, the field direction would be that. So below, inside the coil, it is going in this direction. This is also going in this direction. Both are going in this direction. So here inside, the upper part and the lower part are adding up. Okay, and outside, here, this is still going in this direction, but this field is going in this direction, they delete each other. Yeah? Alright, this is the reason why. Because here, outside the coil, they are deleting each other. Yeah? They are super, superposition. It's superposition. Yeah? So that we only have inside our coil a field. Yes, what is true that here at the end of the coil, I don't have I don't have any counterparts on this side. This is why here we also notice a little bit of a so-called stray field. Okay, so we have a stray field there, which is simply there because the coil is not infinite long. Yeah? But actually, if we are not taking into account the stray field, then we can use this. Okay, and now, now we know why we we can set this like that. Huh? And now we do a little, I don't want to call it trick, but we do a little mathematic. Huh? Because actually what this is, this is a formula, right? So it's written here, n multiplied by i equals h multiplied by l. Yeah. And in a formula, if I do on the left, on the right side, on the left side, the same thing, like multiplying with mu, it's still valid. <laughs> and now I also multiply with a, right now, just because I can, without violating any rules. With this cross section here of the of the coil, okay. and now what are those things? If I interpret this mu here as our magnetic field constant, yeah, then I can say, hey, this here. This is B, right? This is B, yeah? Mag magnetic flux density, flux density. All right. So, let's note this. This is B multiplied by L multiplied by A. Good, huh? And now, I will divide by L, yeah? So actually, here I'm ending up at what is written on the left hand side, mu multiplied by n multiplied by i multiplied by a divided by l and on the right hand side, uh, what is left, there is b multiplied by a and b multiplied by a is nothing more than the magnetic Flux inside there. Hmm? All right. Ah. Whoa. Uh. Not a big trick. Now we make a definition. Yeah. We make the magnetic flux linkage. Okay. Magnetic flux. Linkage. All right. Right. I never heard this word before, but all right. Magnetic flux linkage. Yeah. And this is phi. Phi. Usually. Yeah. And it's phi 
multiplied by n. All right? So this is because we say the flux is going through every winding. This is the flux linkage. For every winding, the flux is there, and so we multiply it with n. Yeah? And this phi b. Phi b equals in our case, if this is if this is our our magnetic flux, mu multiplied by n multiplied by i multiplied by a divided by L. And now I have to uh, multiply this with n. Check, I'm done. Yeah. Now I write this everything, everything n squared. Yeah. Mu multiplied by a divided by L. Yeah. Multiplied by i. This stuff here is usually called lambda. Yeah. So that's n squared, and then we have a big lambda multiplied by i. And now we come to the point where we're talking about inductance. Yeah? Inductance. The inductance L is defined that our flux linkage equals L multiplied by I. And now let's compare this. So our L, our inductance L of a coil is n squared mu A divided by L. Yeah. This is the inductance of a coil and this is combining the magnetic flux yeah, linkage, attention, not the magnetic flux inside, the magnetic flux linkage and the current. It's actually, it was the charge. In, 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 in electric field it was the charge and the voltage. Here it's the uh, flux linkage and the current. Yeah? This in capacitance it was called an electric field and here it's called inductance. Okay? The unit, let's see, here we have Weber, right? One Weber by Ampere. This is one volt second by Ampere and this is called one H, one Henry. Cool. Named after Joseph Henry. That's the inductance. Yeah? So the inductance is somehow combining or showing uh, giving a relation between uh, the, the current and the magnetic flux in there. If we have linear materials, because look at the, what is inside that is this mu. Yeah? If we have linear materials, this is perfect. Yeah? If we have non-linear materials, like in ferromagnetic materials, then this inductance would be big, yeah? but not linear. Yeah? Then it, it depends a little bit. Yeah? So the, we have to take into account so if we don't have air coils or, or vacuum coils or something like this, yeah, then we, we need, really have to uh, take into account this mu r and have a look at our usual operating point that we can make a linearization of mu or something like that. Yeah, but we have to keep in mind this is inside there. Okay, so it's not that easy with ferromagnetic materials. Yeah. Inductance. And actually, that's it. This is what inductance is. Yeah, some time ago we talked about the uh, energy density in the magnetic field. Now we have a magnetic field produced by a coil. So we should be able to calculate how much energy is in stored is stored inside our magnetic field in our coil. Yeah? This we'll do next time. Uh, next time, magnetic energy stored in a coil.
for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.